bodies of a family of three and their dog found near Yosemite National Park. What's behind all these strange disappearances and sightings? Yosemite has been a hotbed of excitement for a long time, drawing in millions of tourists with its jaw-dropping landscapes. Its granite cliffs, waterfalls, clear streams, and biological diversity have attracted all sorts of people from all over the world. But now, there's an extra reason to be careful while you explore. A few years back, one of the park rangers suddenly vanished and there was no trace of them. Well, that was not until years later when they suddenly reappeared. But what happened to the park ranger? Let's find out. Yosemite National Park is a national park in California that is bordered on the southeast by the Sierra National Forest and on the northwest by Stanislaus National Forest. The park is so large that it is shared by four counties, making it the second largest park in the U.S. The history of Yosemite that most people don't know is that the park was critical to the development of the concept of national parks. Galen Clark and others petitioned to protect Yosemite Valley from development, ultimately leading to President Abraham Lincoln's signing of the Yosemite Grant of 1864, which declared Yosemite as federally preserved land. In 1890, Yosemite Valley and its surrounding areas were declared a national park. This helped pave the way for the national park system to become a symbol of natural beauty and conservation efforts worldwide, which UNESCO recognized and, in 1984, declared Yosemite a World Heritage Site. Since then, Yosemite has been a popular park for many Americans and international visitors, receiving about 4 million visitors annually. The park is so popular that in 2016, Yosemite set a visitation record, surpassing 5 million visitors for the first time. It's this popularity that has made NASA's news of closing the park, due to a series of mysterious disappearances, even more shocking. NASA, like the space exploration one? Yes, you heard right. Today, we will look at why NASA shifted its space exploration from Earth to this very national park. As a natural park, Yosemite is a natural laboratory for scientists and researchers. From geologists amazed at its iconic granite formations like Half Dome and El Capitan, to biologists studying its diverse ecosystems, Yosemite is a place of ongoing discovery and inspiration. Besides its scientific and geological significance, Yosemite holds a special place in the hearts of outdoor fanatics. It has trails ranging from easy walks to challenging hikes, offering something for everyone. But beneath its tranquil exterior, Yosemite hides a series of mysteries that have left visitors and authorities alike perplexed. These mysteries are the reasons why an organization like NASA might interfere in the park's affairs. One such case is that of Michael Pfizer, a 51-year-old adventurer from Southern California. Michael was adopted into the Pfizer family as a kid and quickly developed a deep connection with the great outdoors. He developed a special liking for Yosemite National Park, regarding it as his second home. He was known for his exceptional memory, especially for hiking trails, a skill that gave him an edge over Yosemite's ragged terrain and scenic trails. With these praises, one might find Michael's disappearance confusing. On June 15, 2005, Michael embarked on a solo hike in the park, a trip that will soon turn out to be his last. This hike seemed just like any other, as he had mastered this routine over the years. He planned to hike from the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir to the famous Lake Eleanor, a trek that is about nine miles. Having explored the area a couple of times in the past, Michael was familiar with the area. What was different about this trip? Michael set off for his hike and was being waited for at the proposed end, at Lake Eleanor. Concerns quickly grew when the hiker failed to arrive at the destination as planned. His family wasn't all that shaken at first, as Michael had often miscalculated his hiking distance in the past, and they hoped for a simple explanation. But the family's worry escalated to alarm after they failed to get hold of him, leading them to file a missing persons report. Yosemite National Park officials immediately launched an extensive search operation for the hiker. Teams of experienced searchers and other well-wishers scoured the park with the help of dogs and helicopters. After some time searching along the trail, they found his backpack, water bottle, camera, and topographical map near the trail. But Michael was nowhere to be seen. Could it have been that Michael had gotten tired and gone home? Well, not in this case. 
as his car was still parked in the Hetch Hetchy parking lot. The search parties did their best to locate the 51-year-old hiker, but were unlucky. Michael's disappearance left everyone with numerous questions. How had he disappeared without a trace despite being a seasoned hiker? Had he had an accident? Was there something supernatural at play? Everyone tried to understand this mystery. The lack of closure surrounding Michael's disappearance has been a source of continuous pain and confusion for his family and visitors to the park at large. How could a seasoned hiker so familiar with the trails vanish without a trace? Questions that have been left unanswered to this day. If you like the content of the video so far, don't be afraid to smash the like button. And if you are interested in more content like this, feel free to subscribe to this channel. Now, let's get back to the mysteries of Yosemite. Michael Pfizer's disappearance, though tragic, wasn't the only one witnessed by the park. In fact, the park has had a series of such disappearances, with that of Chef David Paul Morrison hitting the headlines in 1998. David, a 28-year-old from San Francisco, was a profound chef and an enthusiastic hiker passionate about the infamous Yosemite's rugged terrain. It was this passion that led David and his girlfriend to explore the park on May 25, 1998. David, being an experienced hiker, was keen to conquer the challenging trails of Half Dome, a granite dome at the eastern end of Yosemite Valley. The day started out just like any other in the park. That morning, David had told his girlfriend that he had plans for an early morning solo hike and would meet up with her later. He was not going to stay overnight, as those who saw him at around 7.15 a.m. in Little Yosemite Valley, a waypoint en route to the Half Dome, noted that he was carrying just a day pack and dressed in a sweatshirt and running shoes, and he didn't seem equipped for overnight camping. The hours went by, and it was David's estimated arrival time, but there was still no sign of David. They waited anxiously for the young hiker to arrive, but his girlfriend's patience grew weary. She filed a report, and the park's official began an immediate search for him. The prompt search for David was long and extensive. It took searchers as long as three days to even find a clue about the hiker. On the first night, searchers crowded the area, hoping they would find him. Even if he had been injured, at least he would have been found, right? Well, these hopes continued to the second night and the third day. By now, the search had escalated. 75 searchers, five dog teams, and helicopters were deployed to aid in the search of David. You expect that with such a turnout, they would at least find something. But they didn't. Not even the search dogs could locate David's scent in the Half Dome and Little Yosemite Valley areas. Adding to this horrid mystery, searches often experienced issues with their GPS devices, reporting lost data and slow auto-locking. These efforts were futile, as no trace of the hiker David was ever found. To add to the mind-blowing mystery of disappearances in Yosemite Park is one of Dean Nyan. The case of Dean was reported in 1972 and was one of the most horrific stories at the time. Dean, a 29-year-old medical student from the UK, was on vacation at Yosemite National Park when he mysteriously disappeared. Dean was a promising Cambridge student with a bright future ahead of him, and his sudden disappearance shocked many especially the frequent visitors to Yosemite National Park. According to records, on July 24th, Dean rented a cabin in Curry Village, a famous spot among the visitors of the park. On this specific day, he set out to explore Yosemite, a place renowned for its stunning landscapes and challenging trails. No one would have imagined it would be the last time anyone saw him. What made this particular disappearance mysterious was the state in which Dean's alleged cabin was in. According to records, Dean was supposed to check out on July 31st, and according to protocol, every time a guest checks out, the park staff comes in to check on the state of the cabin. On this day, while checking the room, the park staff made a shocking discovery. While in the cabin, they discovered that none of Dean's belongings seemed to be touched. More so, his bed was still well spread. It seemed as if he hadn't slept a single night there. Had Dean vanished in thin air immediately after he arrived? Jack Moorhead, a chief ranger at the park, led a team of searchers to scout the park, hoping to find at least a clue on Dean. The search was long, and sadly, it didn't bear any fruit. This was odd because Dean was suspected to have disappeared near the Half Dome area, an area known to have pretty obvious trails. 
The news of the disappearance came as a shock to most, more so his father. Being a notable figure in the diamond industry, Dean's family was well off, and his father, not satisfied with the findings of the search team, hired a private investigator to look into the disappearance. The investigator thoroughly questioned the Curry Village employees and some park rangers, hoping to get some information. He also attempted to trace Dean's possible routes, but just like the official search, this investigator came up with nothing. Decades have passed, and Dean's mysterious disappearance is still in people's mouths. What may have happened to this young, ambitious man on the trails of Yosemite? Dean's story remains an unsolved file in the disappearance cases of Yosemite Valley. To add to the list of disappearance cases is one of B. Orvar von Lass, a Swedish national who visited Yosemite and was met with the same fate as Dean and David. Orvar was a man of great intellect and one who loved the outdoors. He was living and studying in the U.S. and was always out and about, experiencing the vast wilderness the country has to offer. His passion and adventurous spirit are what led Orvar, his wife, and her parents to the scenic Yosemite. During their visit, the family took a stay at the fancy Awani Hotel. Orvar, being the adventurous one, took a short hike to get a better view of the scenic valley, a decision that would lead to his unexplained disappearance. It was around 3 p.m. when Orvar left his family behind and decided to take a hike. He intended to face the infamous Royal Arches, a part considered by many to be one of Yosemite's all-time classics because of its breathtaking views of the valley. The route weaves its way up an impressive band of rock, and although it includes a few moderate climbs, it is a relatively easy hike, especially for this enthusiast, who has had hiking experiences both in Sweden and California. However, despite his skills in conquering rugged terrain, Orvar never made it back from this seemingly easy hike. His family immediately reported this, and the search for the hiker began. Park rangers equipped with climbing gear and other useful equipment embarked on a dangerous climb up the rocky walls of the Royal Arches. They were desperate to find this young Swedish national. The search team also sought the help of our furry friends, the Bloodhounds, a large scent-sensitive dog breed originally kept for tracking people. The trackers, though, with the help of these dogs, were unlucky. They managed to track Orvar's scent up to the edges of the cliff, but that was it. The dogs were unable to follow the trail any further after this point. Professional mountain climbers from Barkley also joined the search to help locate Orvar. But just like the rangers before them, they came out empty-handed. Both groups questioned why an experienced hiker like Orvar would decide to climb the slippery cliff without proper gear. What happened to the young Swedish national is still a mystery a mystery whose answers still lay deep in the woods of the Yosemite Valley. Where are the adventurers disappearing to? This question was asked again later, the same year Orvar disappeared after yet another mind-boosting disappearance happened. The disappearance of one Walter Gordon in 1954, the same year Orvar von Lass disappeared, cast a dark shadow of worry and unanswered questions over the great Yosemite National Park. Walter was a 26-year-old graduate student who, like the people before him, had met the same fate that shocked an entire room of experts and enthusiasts. In the summer of 1954, Walter worked at the park as a summer clerk at the well-known Camp Curry. He was an enthusiastic hiker, and this job for him was nothing less than spectacular. Being familiar with the park and its trails, Walter embarked on a solo hike along the ledge trail. Being familiar with it, Walter informed his colleagues that he would be back before nightfall. However, as time passed and dusk turned to darkness, Walter was nowhere to be seen. This was unlike the young hiker's behavior, and it sparked concern among his fellow colleagues. After a report on Walter's disappearance, the park officials, together with a dedicated search party, embarked on a search for the young hiker. This specific search was thorough and involved a significant amount of resources, from park rangers to volunteers and even the famous tracker dogs, bloodhounds, the search party was determined to find this hiker. What I don't get is that Walter was a clerk at the park, and according to his colleagues, the ledge trail was one of the areas Walter was more familiar with. What may have led him to disappear? If you know enough about dogs, 
you will know that bloodhounds are amazing trackers. The dogs managed to track Walter's scent along the trail for a while, but in a puzzling twist, they just stopped at the road. This sudden stop at the scent trail led the officials to believe that Walter had left the park. The chief ranger at the time, Oscar Cedrin, even considered this a possibility. However, the theory that the young man might have left the park left more questions than answers. This is because all of Walter's belongings were still in the park, and according to his colleagues, Walter had shown no signs of leaving the park. Despite the long and extensive efforts to locate him, Walter was never found, and no further clues emerged. Walter's disappearance, which happened so close to Orvar's, raised a lot of questions about the park and its unsolved mysteries. What happened to Walter? Why did the clues come to such an abrupt end? These are just... But a few questions that have shaken the frequency of Yosemite and even other visitors. Hey, you must be interested in finding out about NASA's discovery of the park, right? Me too. Why don't you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss more on the discoveries? Now back to the story. Another mystic disappearance that happened in this park was that of Joel Thomason. This one happened not too long ago in 2021. Joel's story is particularly puzzling as it has a questionable nature and the efforts to find him, though extensive, ended up in a dead end. Joel Thomasin, an enthusiastic adventurer from Denaire, set out on a hiking expedition on September 6, 2021. His hike was to start at the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir and continue for about nine miles to the most known Lake Eleanor. He intended the hike to be a short three-day excursion, but Joel, being an outdoor lover, you wouldn't be surprised to see him with a really big kayak on his back just for the hike. Three days ran out, and there was no sign of Joel. It didn't take long for the alarm to be raised. Yosemite National Park released a prompt message and a description of Joel to help in the search for him. The message said, If you were in the area of Miguel Meadow, Lake Eleanor, or the trials at Hetch Hetchy since Monday, September 6, 2021, or have any information regarding this individual, Please contact Yosemite Search and Rescue at 209-230-87046. The team of Yosemite Search and Rescue looked through every part of the park. They also got help from 16 members of the National Park Service, who also came with their search dogs. For sure, this group was determined to find Joel. Additional support from the entire county of Tuolumne. Crazy, right? Unlike the previous cases discussed, the county handed out equipment, boats, and helicopters to find the hiker. But the question is, what happened to Joel Thomasin in the well-traveled area? It is still left unanswered. Timothy John Barnes, a 25-year-old resident of Cucamonga, California, is yet another victim of the Yosemite disappearance. In addition to adding to the mysterious incidents in Yosemite, his disappearance has left more questions and answers. Timothy's soon-to-be last journey began on July 5, 1988, when he left Tenaya Lakes near Highway 120, east of Tioga Road in California, at approximately 9 a.m. Barnes had planned to hike from the Murphy Creek Trailhead all the way to Polydome Lakes, just in Yosemite National Park. The Murphy Creek Trailhead is located approximately three miles from Tenaya Lakes. Barnes was supposed to return by 4.30 p.m., but the time moved by, and he never showed up. His friends immediately began Barnes, and when they couldn't find him, they decided to wait for a while because, you know, he might have decided to take a detour, and they hoped he would return. The next morning, Barnes's friends reported him as a missing person to the park service rangers. An extensive search of the surrounding area began immediately, with several search teams dedicated to finding Barnes searching the area. Their devoted efforts were disappointed as the search failed to produce evidence of his whereabouts. What doesn't seem to add up to most is the circumstances of Barnes's disappearance. The trails he was hiking on before his disappearance were well known and frequently traveled, so the chances of someone getting lost here, especially a regular, were as slim as a thread. But still, Barnes was never found, either by the experienced searchers or the tracking dogs they used. Timothy Barnes's story is a constant reminder of the park's unpredictable nature. Don't get too comfortable in Yosemite. In 2007, news like a park ranger found the body of an 80-year-old Sherrillville woman Monday afternoon 
in a rugged, thickly vegetated part of California's Yosemite National Park filled the area of California's Yosemite Park. Trina Bonaventura was one of those age is nothing but a number types. Though she was 80 years old, Trina was still a strong hiker, and her spirit for the outdoors never faded. She belonged to the Forest Trails Hiking Club and the Folks on Spokes Bicycling Club. This means that Trina was still an active soul, even at her age. The sudden and horrific disappearance that occurred on July 30, 2007, came as a shock to many of her friends and colleagues. Upon visiting the park, Trina set up camp at the Vogelsang High Sierra Camp. The area was one of the park's most remote areas and was only accessible by foot or horseback. Though interior, the camp is a picturesque spot with crystal clear lakes surrounded by large granite mountains. Can you imagine the beauty? On that fateful day, Trina, along with the other three of his friends, set out to hike through the breathtaking granites. Just after a few hours, Trina was tired and left the group to go back to camp for food and water. Had they known it would be the last time they saw her, they wouldn't have let her go. When the three were done hiking, they decided to join Trina back at the campsite. They were shocked to find no sign of Trina. Immediately, they started to make calls to Trina without any luck, and they sought help from the park. The park wasted no time in responding to the case. More than 150 people showed up on the grounds and searched Yosemite. They worked hard and tirelessly because they knew that as days went by, Bonaventura's survival chances decreased, and the huge turnouts to aid in the search turned to limited searching. Was Bonaventura still alive? Specialists trained for high-altitude recoveries and highly trained dogs couldn't get the answer to this as their search bore no fruit. The search team often found themselves walking in circles. Two weeks later, a park ranger made a shocking discovery while she was on a routine patrol around the Echo Creek drainage area. At about 5 p.m. Monday, the ranger came across the lifeless body of Trina Bonaventura near a dry creek bed. Freeman said, Bonaventura's body was far from the trail on which she was last seen. This area was more ragged and vegetated than other areas of Tuolumne Meadows. Remember, this area had been thoroughly investigated during the previous search. We will never know exactly what happened, and we won't determine a cause of death until we conclude the investigation, Freeman said to the crowd demanding answers. Bonaventura hiked a lot. The retired computer programmer worked out every morning at the Omni 41 Fitness Center in Sherrville, Krinkovich said, adding she doesn't understand how Bonaventura died. Comments like these stormed platforms, everyone expressing resentment. Rangers, too, were still trying to understand why Trina ended up in this area, despite it being unreachable. With all these cases, NASA would never have looked past Yosemite, especially after this next event that shocked the media. But first, why don't you give this video a thumbs up? Yosemite has earned a reputation in people's disappearances over the years. Yes, I know what you're thinking, but people disappear from parks all the time. Yes, that's true. There are hundreds of cases of disappearances in many different parks in a year, but you know what doesn't happen in most parks? Reports of rangers getting in contact with strange, unexplainable beings. The Yosemite Valley has a dark history of paranormal activities that even officials cannot explain. Just in recent years, a number of park rangers have reported seeing shocking images and figures in the woods of Yosemite Park. These experiences left some rangers too terrified to tell their story. Others, even to date, failed to heal from what they saw. Many have reported seeing shadowy figures that resemble the well-known monster Bigfoot or Sasquatch in the park. In fact, there is one site in the park that has become famous for such strange occurrences. The site is the very same one from which the Swedish national B. Orvar von Lass disappeared. The Awani Hotel was large and luxurious. It was opened in 1927 in Yosemite Park. Though appealing to tourists, the Awani has also been in the mouths of many for reports of ghost apparitions and strange howling noises. These reports have made the once tourist trap a deserted island. But even so, this ghostly presence persists. And who are the victims? The park's rangers. In 2011, one ghostly encounter happened to Stephen, a park ranger at Yosemite. He was doing his regular night patrols at around 11 p.m. when he spotted a figure moving in at a distance. At first, the ranger thought it was a hiker or another ranger. 
but as he got closer and closer to the figure, he felt as if his vision was getting shadowy. The figure, though shaped like a human, wasn't. You expect a human to have, you know, a face or even clothes on, right? This figure had neither of these. Most shockingly, the figure appeared to be floating from the ground. Stephen stood in shock for a while. He was completely frozen, especially after seeing the figure float towards him. After a few seconds, the figure vanished into thin air just as fast as it had appeared. Stephen thought he was running mad. I mean, wouldn't you? He got back to the station and the first thing he did was sit down and take a cup of coffee, trying to recollect what had just happened. Stephen was scared to report the incident, fearing that they would think he was crazy. The next day, during his regular rounds, Stephen met other hikers who confessed to seeing a similar figure. What is even more interesting is that all the hikers who claimed to have seen the figure were camping in or around the same general area where Stephen saw the figure. One couple came up to say that the same figure rattled their door throughout the night. Another witness, a mother of three, described a similar figure, but with red glowing eyes. Hearing all these confessions, Stephen reported the incident to his colleagues. Now, with five people claiming to see the exact or similar figure Stephen saw, they had to believe him. What is this figure people are claiming to see? Is it responsible for the sudden disappearances in Yosemite National Park? Just so you know, Stephen isn't the only ranger who came up with the report, citing an unfamiliar figure. Another ranger reported seeing a woman walking alone in one of the most isolated areas of the park. What shocked the ranger was that the woman wasn't carrying any camping or hiking equipment with her. And when the ranger took a look at his file, she saw something that almost made her run mad. So you better hit that subscribe button before the figure comes for you. On this day, this ranger was patrolling the area, carefully driving through one of the thickest and most bushy parts of the park. Though the area was isolated and there were almost no hikers around, the ranger had to patrol the area. This far into Yosemite, there weren't many people, but as a park ranger, it's my job to patrol these woods and protect visitors from nature as much as possible, she said. Just as she got deeper and deeper into Yosemite, the ranger saw a woman standing a few meters from the road. She was in a rocky field on a slope leading up a hill to her left. Despite the fact that they were out in the middle of nowhere, the woman had no hiking equipment, no backpack, nothing. As a park ranger, she had to approach the woman to see if she was all right. Maybe she might have been lost or something. The ranger waved to the woman, but she didn't respond so she decided to approach her. As the ranger got closer, the woman saw her but began to walk away, heading up the rocky slope. Hey, miss, are you okay? The ranger asked again, but there was still no response from the woman. Instead, she continued to walk up the slope until she reached the top. Then she just disappeared into the trees. They wondered what had just happened. She quickly saw familiarity on the woman's face, so she decided to look her up just to correctly identify the woman. Eventually, the ranger found the woman's file. In it, there were photos that matched the person she had just seen exactly. Except her clothes were different. She also realized that, according to her records, get this, the woman had been reported missing nearly eight months ago. The ranger quickly called the station and told them what she'd seen, then grabbed her backpack and took off on foot, running up the tree line hoping to catch the woman. According to the ranger, the woman walked slowly, and if she continued at that pace, the ranger had a good chance of catching up with her. The ranger reached the top of the hill and managed to find her tracks. She followed them into the woods for almost an hour. I followed her path through the forest, becoming more and more convinced that I should have caught up with her, the ranger said. She realized something was wrong when she lost the woman's trail, the ranger felt as if the woman had vanished. The ranger, having some experience in hunting, thought that maybe the tracks would appear again in front because sometimes such things happen, so she continued to go deeper into the bushes and that's when she saw something that would change her life forever. A staircase appeared out of the overgrowth. This was strange in this environment. I mean, what would a staircase be doing in a natural park, especially in such a place where almost no one visits? What's even more disturbing is that the stairs looked new and had only 13 steps. What in the world was happening here? 
The ranger then remembered climbing the stairs despite not wanting to. It was like something was making her do it. All this while, she felt like something was watching her all along. The trees nearby rustled with movement. When she looked back, she saw a vague shape moving behind them. She thought maybe it was the woman she first saw, so she decided to call out to her. Miss, if that's you, I've been looking all over for you. Are you all right? She asked the dark figure in the trees. The figure didn't respond. It didn't even move. It just stayed there, watching her. Before the ranger could make any contact, she realized that the figure, though looking like a human, was too tall to be human. Standing at about six feet tall, the ranger immediately knew that this shadowy figure was not human. The thing stood up even taller, and I realized it had been crouched down. It was enormous. Its form was impossible to examine in low light, but it was definitely watching me. Shockingly for the ranger, she saw more than one such figure. Whatever these things were, I could tell they were not benevolent or good. These figures were clearly creatures of darkness, luring people to them so they could feast on their minds. What would you have done if you were the ranger? Goosebumps all over and shaking, the ranger ran back the way she came. At the time, she remembered that her watch and all her GPS devices didn't seem to function during that time. After this incident, the pack ranger was too overwhelmed to keep quiet about it. She decided to post her story online for the public to see. Tell me what you think about this. Is there a logical explanation for this mysterious encounter? The park ranger's traumatic experience did not end there. While she was escaping the alleged monsters, the pack ranger fell and hit her head hard, causing her to collapse and go unconscious. When she woke up, there was a male park ranger standing over her asking if she was okay. But the weird thing was that she didn't recognize the male ranger. It turns out she had been reported missing eight months ago. Looking around, I saw my truck was nowhere to be seen. It was a different season as well. The trees were turning slightly yellow when I went into the forest, an early signal of autumn. But now they were as bright green as they would be at the beginning of summer, she said. These encounters by different park rangers, visitors, and even regular explorers led to various theories and speculations about what was really happening in the park. Some believe these phenomena might be manifestations of paranormal activity. Others believed that it might be an ancient curse that was put on the land many years ago. Other specialists also think that the combination of isolation, the large mass of wilderness, and the mirage of light and shadows in the park can trigger the imagination, leading to these psychological experiences. But this theory doesn't explain the failure of tracking equipment during the search for victims, or even the disappearances that happened. These different theories are what have led the space exploration team at NASA to dive deep into the park in order to find a logical explanation behind them. Whatever the causes of the disappearance in the park, or the explanation of what the park rangers saw, the fact still remains that Yosemite National Park has a hidden secret. Thanks for exploring these mysterious cases with us. Ciao.